Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Welcome to another edition of Women's History Month, hashtag choose to challenge with the amazing Sammy Blendell coming all the way from the UK. Sammy, good morning and welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really excited to dig into the topic that you've got today. Thank you. Well, we're not going to waste a lot of time, so we're going to jump right in. Sammy, why don't you start by telling our listening audience a little bit about you, what do you have going on, and uh, what's new in your world? Oh, thank you, Luana. Well, literally, we're getting ready to launch Ripple Fest, which is a, a one-week program that we, we run at the end of every month. It's the last week of every month. We run it to raise money for causes that really need our help right now, because with the world being in the little little bit of chaos that it is, charities and uh, causes can't really act and promote in the same way that they usually would. And so I thought, how can we take a bit of control around that? How can we bring 100 change makers from all around the world and unite and collaborate to share, to grow, to learn, to give back, to pay forward and to raise money for causes? So I bring movement makers in all throughout the week and I ask them to nominate a charity. So instead of paying them, we get everyone to pay just eight pounds to be a part of it and collect it all in at the end of the week. And then we uh, we give those to, to the charity. So we, it became so popular. We now run it at the end of every month. <laughs> it's become uh, something that's uh, that's building a, a really good tribe. So it's amazing. So we've got that going on at the moment. It's all about, you know, how do you decide what ripple it is that you want to make in the world? And then we work on that. Uh, for a week, getting your voice out. And that's why I love, love, love the topic you've got today, because it is all about your voice and celebrating being able to share that voice. And what a great time we are in to to decide what that ripple of impact is we want to make, and then to get it out there to master that message and share it. Yes, thank you. And I, I love what you're doing with the ripple effect. And I have to get my my little pen. You do. <laughs> you can get them from onedropmovement.com. I'll okay, send it well, over. It should take about a week to get to you because you're you're in the States and I'll be sending it from England, but they usually take about seven days. Okay. Thank you. Yes, I will um yes, I'll make, make, make my drop. order. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us a little bit about um women's history month, what it means to you, why it's so important to uh recognize women and the shoulders that we stand on, but also what it means for us as women today to celebrate and recognize the accomplishments of each other. Mm. Such a beautiful movement, isn't it? To bring women together for the purpose of of co-creation and collaboration and unity. That's everything that we stand for here. And especially the championship of each other at all times. I think that's something that is something we could all be doing that little bit more. I know that certainly over the last 12 months, everybody's had to, to get on and, you know, people have had to keep the lights on. Other people have had to pivot. Some people have had to reinvent <laughs> and, yes. and some people have had to just stop what they're doing altogether and say, do you know what? Actually, this is a great time to reignite some of the dreams that I had when I was younger. And what I love about bringing women together specifically is that there's a community gene that is just, I think, born into women And, you know, it's not that men don't have it, but I think that men quite often learn from watching the women just do this so naturally. And what I'd love to see definitely is that that now everybody's kind of their focus, they've got into their lane, they're now into their groove. I'm feeling there's quite a lot of people that are really working on their own again, and it's time to start collaborating. You know, it's like the tide, like one drop. It's like the tide, you know, everybody kind of went out and now we're coming back in and then they go out and then they come back in. And this is now the time to start coming back in and coming together and co-collaborating, you know, and we've kind of been out there, we've got the ideas now come back and start working together. So the reason this is so important to me um, specifically for this show today is that if there are people that are out there that have a message or have a voice that they they're getting that calling that ache inside them that there's you know there's more to life than this or there's there is more out there then 
there are women just like you who are going through the same thing and we don't have to go through it alone. It's a, a long, hard, lonely route when we try and go it alone. And especially if, if like me, you know, I come from a really strong line of very independent women and that can be a curse as much as it is a blessing because we become so independent. We don't ask for help. We don't reach out for help or we feel exactly. like that's a weakness or a failure or something. And it's like, oh my gosh, like now what I'm seeing is the most vulnerable are the people who are getting the most support. They're growing the fastest. They're accelerating where, where they're getting to. So this is such an important conversation. I think now is the time that if if we've started to kind of get lonely in our missions, now's the time to bring it back in. That's why it means so much to me right now. And I love that. And we've all heard the saying, you know, by yourself, you can go far, but together we can go much, so much farther. Yeah. And, yeah. and again, that's the effect of the ripple effect. You, you know, you throw it in a pond and then you just create this ripple that radiates yeah. out. So one of our movement makers um, on the last ripple fest uh, said something that really resonated with me. And I've taken that with me ever since they said, it. I was like, yeah, you're absolutely right. And he said, um, if you're, if you're doing it alone, you're doing it wrong. If mm. you're doing it alone, you're doing it wrong. Cause it's just not necessary anymore. Is it? Right. It's not. And being, and being willing to say, I don't know, or I need support. And like you said, when you come from that, you know, I'm independent. I know I can get it done. It can be a blessing and a curse. So you have to get out of your own way sometimes. Yes. A hundred percent. Like that's one of the biggest lessons that I've learned. I built 10 companies now. And there are times when I've really felt like I'm pushing that wheelbarrow uphill. And there are times when it's been so in flow, it's ridiculous. It doesn't feel like I should even be, you know, living so easily. You know, it's like, how can it be this easy? This is just crazy. And what I've really learned is that when I look back, through the easiest times, the flow times, they're the times when I let go. They're mm. the times when I had the idea and then let go and released it to wherever it was meant to, to go. I mean, that, that's a great example with Ripple Fest, you know, a doubt from download to changing hundreds of lives every month and raising thousands of money for charity every month, thousands of pounds, dollars and euros, you know, that it can be achieved, but you've got to let go to grow. It won't work if you're hustling, stri striving and driving, trying to push it. It it just, it doesn't create flow and then flow stops everywhere. Um, I don't know if you've found that. Yes. Yes, I have. And, and I love that point. And I, and I hope our listening audience heard that because you don't want to dam up your your, your, the, the, the flow, right. And we can do that by just trying to be so in control that we create these dams all around us. And we're wondering, well, what's happening? Why are we stagnant or why can we only go so far, but not to the heights or the expansion or the impact that we want? But again, Absolutely. when you release, <laughs> release those locks off, off yeah. the dams of your life and allow the, <laughs> the water of creation to flow, the water of impact to flow Completely. and collaboration to flow. It's brilliant. It's just that ripple of impact, isn't it? It's funny because like we sold everything last year just before lockdown, the first lockdown. So we we bought a, a boat. We just wanted complete freedom. And I'm such a water baby. I'm an Aquarian. I don't know if that's got anything to do with it, but I just love the water, anything to do with water. And I always wanted to live by the water. And when Greg suggested, well, why don't we get a boat? It was like, oh my God, we could live on the water. That's even more amazing. Um, and so I'm coming live to you from uh, the, the Ripple Makers boat now. Um, but what's really interesting that, that as you're saying that is when you're on a, on a barge, which we're on, and you want to get somewhere, you have to open the locks. So you have a, a lock keeper and you have to open the lock to be able to let the boat through. And when you think about that as an analogy, right, you've got to open the idea. <laughs> you've got to open the idea. You've got to take the brakes off. You've got to take, you know. And the other thing that happens when when you go through a lock, and I don't know if you've ever been through one, but when you go through a lock, what happens is you've got these big gates and you can't see under the water, but like there's a, a, a huge amount of gate that is stopping one uh, I suppose one unit, one big mass of water meeting the other mass, right? So when what happens is, 
I just got a frog in my throat then. What happens is um, it doesn't allow you to just open the floodgates. You don't open the floodgates. What you do is they've got these little panels under the water. You can't even see them. And you, you some of them are manual and you have to put your elbow grease into it and you have to unlock it that way. And others, you just press a button and it goes and you have to wait for it. And it goes really slowly. But you can't see it. But what happens is as the, the, the gate under the water starts to rise, you start to see that the water is gently it's like it's nourishing, it's nurturing, and you can see the water just slowly rise. And when you're on the boat, you can feel it rising and you can feel the ripple of the impact is literally taking you up. And if you think of that as how we as women can collaborate, we don't have to be that tsunami. We don't have to flatten each other. You don't have to shout the loudest. You don't have to be the strongest. You can create a gentle undercurrent that rises everybody and that to me is the most beautiful way that we can co-create especially as women I think that's the most powerful way is to um you know it's almost like if you're if you're shouting you've already lost yes it's the it's the quietness it's the stillness it's the being the brand rather than the doing the branding that that I think that's what creates the gentle undercurrent of the trust currency and the credibility and the way that we can really nurture and everybody rises then. And I, that's, that's a really powerful thing. Yes. I, I, I always love your, love your analogies. And I think it just helps to make your message resonate even more with our, with our listeners. So when we think about the the theme this year for um, International Women's Day, Women's Month, it's hashtag choose to challenge. When you hear those words, what does that mean to you? Choose to challenge. Mm. What I really hear is um, c- courage, choose to challenge. I, you know, I think many people could maybe see the word challenge as confrontational. I see it as courageous, <laughs> you know, choosing to challenge is challenging our own beliefs. You don't have to challenge someone else. One of the things that, or one of the reasons why I launched Ripple Fest, in fact, the biggest reason I launched Ripple Fest was because I was sitting here thinking, like, how can I challenge the belief that people have currently? Not everybody, but there were a lot of people, and I was seeing it all over social media. Like, they believed that they were losing control, like government has control, the vaccine has control, you know, the the um, conditions have control, right? There's all these things that have control. People, um, you know, can't go to work. So there, there's limitations on everybody. We're controlled, can't leave our homes, you know, got to wear masks. And there were so many people that were the, the undercurrent for that was a lack of control, losing control. And I thought, sat here uh, at my desk just there thinking but we we do have control of the most important things in life we have control of how we show up we have control of how we impact we we can choose we can choose to challenge our beliefs about how generous we are how gracious we are how grateful we are how much of an impact we can have on others we we get to challenge those things we definitely get to challenge those things. And and I sat here and I thought, you know, if, if I can bring just 100 people together who are choosing to change and choosing to challenge the world that we're in now and choosing to be a part of building the world we want to live in, if I can bring 100 of those people together who might not even have a clue what their idea is, they might not even have a business, they might just have something that's burning inside of them that they want to explore, thought, how could I help them to get control of that thing within themselves? Because, you know, other things might have um, you know, a loss of control or a lack of control, but we can control this and we can control the things that we do. And so uh, I thought, you know, if we control who we are, if we take control of owning our identity, then we take control of how we own our value. And when we own who we are and we own our identity, like what is my one drop? You know, we've got my mission is to get one million one drop preneurs collaborating, like wearing a one drop that shows the solidarity that we are all in this together. And yet 
each one drop might look the same, but every single one has a different personality because of the personality and the values that, that each person brings to it. So when we own our identity and we own our value, then we can own our gift. And when we own our identity and our value and our gift, that's when we can own the impact we're here to make. And when you own those four things, then you can own your lane and own the brand that you want to be in the world. And I think if we can just take control of those things, actually the ripple effect that's created by a hundred people. Well, what if a hundred people went out and they had that ripple effect on a thousand people each And then those thousand people were a ripple effect for those people. So we're creating a generational change by choosing to challenge who we are, how we're showing up, how we make that impact on others, how we bring our gift to the world, how we value ourselves, how we portray ourselves and how we show up in a way that supports somebody else to be their own one drop without judgment without fear, without without placing our limiting beliefs on other people. So I, I, when I see Choose to Challenge, I think that's about courageously owning who we are, good, bad, and ugly, and choosing to make a change to those things that that we'd like to see happen in a different way. You know, I love the poem. I've spoken about it in a few interviews after the, over the last few days called The Dash by Linda Ellis. If you go to Google, type in Linda Ellis, The Dash. And, you know, she talks about there's the day you're born, there's the day yeah. you die, and there's a little dash in between. What do you want that to stand for? What do you want your one drop to have stood for? Because you do get to choose to challenge that. I wonder what would happen if you did that today. That, that, that's so beautiful. And as you said, it first starts with understanding who you are, embracing that identity, and then creating those building blocks or those start throwing those pebbles out <laughs> to create that ripple effect throughout the world. I, I love that. So two more things before we before we end today. One of the things uh, within the U.S., um, it is our 101, um, 101st anniversary of our women's right to vote. And uh, they wanted to extend it into 2021 because of the pandemic last year. But I know that the UK, your women received the right to vote two years prior. So when we're thinking about, and this isn't a a political posturing at all, but when you think about what the vote represents, it represents us exercising our voice for a particular matter. What would you like to tell women today about being secure in stating your voice, stating your truth, your authenticity? Well, I think if we don't, who will? That's the the key point here is that think of what women actually went through to be able to vote in the first place. <laughs> you know, I mean, like the fact that, that we can vote and we can we have freedom of speech to a certain extent, um, I think is, uh, you know, it's just so important. Because there's so often, often when, you know, I hear people that will say, oh, they went and did that. You know, I've been thinking of doing that for years and they beat me to it. (laughs) Well, when it comes to voting, it's not as free as that, right? It's not like you can have this idea. You know, I believe that God is giving, you know, an idea to a lot of people at the same time just to, to, own the fact that someone's going to go and make this happen. Right? So, yeah. so if, if it's not you, then someone else is going to do it. Where it comes to voting, if you don't vote, it could go completely the other way. I mean, we've, we've had a nightmare in the UK with Brexit, just as an example. And like, I don't want to get political either. I don't really follow any of that. But yeah, like with Brexit, you know, the day that they announced the vote that we were exiting yeah. Um it, the the highest number of Google searches were for what is Brexit. So people actually voted not even knowing what it was and some people didn't wow. vote not knowing what it was and then started like googling it on the day. <laughs> and you think, wow, you know, like and I've met so many people who voted to leave 
who had no idea of the implications and they voted to leave based on one factor of the whole thing. And now they are suffering massively, their businesses especially. And now they're saying, wish I hadn't have voted that way. Wish I'd have thought about the bigger picture. So I would say that the, the biggest reason that people should vote is because you contribute to the bigger picture. But at least, like, please look at the vision of the bigger picture before you make that commitment to the voice that you get out in the world. Because once you put it out there, you can't take it back. I love that. And that's a very, very powerful statement. Be aware, be informed, and then cast your vote, cast your decision. Yeah. Um, last question. I'd like you to tell us a little bit about that woman who you personally know who impacted you in your life and still is her voice is ringing in your ear today and then tell our audience how they can get a hold of you. (laughs) You know, my grandma, she, she still rings true in my ears. She died many years ago, but her passion, her generosity, her healing, her love. I mean, Oh, that woman, she just is somebody that I aspire to be to. To or to be, and I remember um, the day after she died, and I I speak all over the world, and I was at this event uh, to speak, and I remember um, uh, I was just an emotional train wreck because my grandma was like the center. But you know, my mum's amazing. My grandma was the one who brought me up, so I always had that really strong kind of maternal connection to my grandma. My grandma looked after me while my mum went to work. And I remember the day, I mean, that day after, and a friend came up to me and and said, I'm really sorry to hear about your grandma. And I said, thank you. He said, well, can I just ask, was it your your mum's mum? I said, yeah. He said, hmm. He said, so, you know, she's, a quarter of who you are right and I've not seen it that way I said yeah and he said well seems to me that she actually is still alive and she hasn't gone anywhere because she's in you but I've got a question for you what are you going to do to make sure that that amazing part of your grandmother that still gets to live on through you is going to live, is going to love, and is going to matter in the same way that she did while she was alive. Wow. Floodgates, like I was just like, whoa. And I actually I actually said that at her funeral. Um, I shared that at her funeral. And, you know, every day that I wake up and I'm in my one drop energy, it is all to continue the lasting legacy that my grandma, an incredible healer and intuitive who had people travel from all over to come to her for healing. And when she passed over and I I had somebody came and um, gave me a, delivered a message, shall we say, when I was speaking at a different event and they came up and they said, you know, I've got a message for you and I don't know if it makes any sense, but I'm just letting you know your grandma is telling you that she's handing She's handing, what did they say? She's, she's handing, it wasn't the torch. I can't remember the word. But like she's the handing over to you. Yes, yeah, the, yeah, she's handing the baton over to you. And um, and I said, right, okay. And I remember thinking, well, I'm not a healer. <laughs> that's, that's, like, that's what she really stood for, though. I don't do that. Uh, okay, thank you, you know. And I think in many ways... I, I'm able to heal, but I just do it a different way. She did it through her hands. I do it through brand. You know, if you can own your identity, it heals where you've come from and you can turn the mess into the message and the trauma and the pain. You get to own that. You experience that. You don't ignore that. You experience it. You own it. You don't have to go back there. But you can own it in a way that you can share that message so that other people don't experience the lifetime of pain that you had. And so, yeah, my grandma, my grandma is the the amazing, amazing, strong, yet soft, (laughs) you know, powerful, yet 
love. Like she, she was just, she just had it all. She just had it all. And I'm so, so grateful to her. And, and one drop movement stand, this one drop stands for everything. Gratitude, grace, and generosity. They're the top three things that this stands for. And if I ever get out of alignment, as we do, stuff can happen throughout the day. Yes. Technology can go wrong. All of those things. And I just go, okay, what would one drop do? And I place my hand over my one drop. What would one drop to do? And I just breathe and I get back into grace, gratitude, and generosity. And then I'm able to approach every situation from that place. And that creates flow. So I love that. Me. I love that, Sammy. Gratitude, grace, and generosity to create the flow in your life. Sammy, how can individuals get in touch with you and be a part of the one drop movement? Oh, I'd love that. I would love that. You can go to onedropmovement.com and you can find me there uh, or Sammy at onedropmovement.com. They're both the same uh, email and web address. You can find me and I would just be so delighted to to support you and all of the people that follow you to find their one drop and to get out there and start living that one drop. Start living your life to back up the words you say about how you want to be rather than what you want to do. That that would light me up. Thank you so much for inviting me today. Thank you so much, Sammy. And to our listening audience, you have heard from Sammy Blundell from the UK, her, her thoughts and golden nuggets regarding Women History Month, hashtag choose to challenge, be the one drop, be a part of the ripple, uh, uh, ripple effect. You will be amazed mm-hmm. at how the subtleties can be so transformative in your life and create impact. Sammy, again, thank you so very much for joining me this morning. And to our listening audience, as we always say, love yourself, embrace yourself, and whatever you do, celebrate you. Until next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.